Hey guys, it's Henry with Henry Buys Homes here. Just want to share a little video with you guys about how um, I wired up a generator transfer switch and um, inlet power source to my breaker box in my house. And uh, it's carried us through the uh, last hurricane we had last year, I believe that was Irma, um, and ran our whole house with it. Now, keep in mind, this is only 50 amp service as opposed to 150 amp service we get from the power company. Uh, which is FPNL. Um, 50 amp service only allowed us to really want, uh, run one major load at one time, like a water heater, which is about 5,500 watts, or you can run the clothes dryer or the stove. Um, and the stove elements, you know, are, are the small elements are about 2,000 watts typically, and the larger elements are about use about 3,000 watts. So you could probably use two or three of those elements at one time for the generator size we've got, which is a um, I believe a 10,000 running watts and 12,000 uh, starting watts capacity. But anyways, when you guys are, are, are wiring this for a generator setup, there's a couple things you need to keep in mind. Uh, one is it's a requirement by National Electric Code, NEC, that you guys have a transfer switch um, for whatever breaker it is that you're back feeding into from your generator. Um, so you can see right here you've got two buses right two buses are each 120 volt volts each you have to use what's called a dipole breaker so that you can supply power to both buses you got bus one and bus two okay and this is a 50 amp dipole breaker dipole means that it's it serves two buses in your breaker panel okay one and two 120 volts on each bus gives you 240 volts of power capability um, now, if you see this plate right here, that's what's called an interlock for your transfer switch. So this breaker has to be off in order for the main lug from the power company to be on. They can never be on at the same time. This is a safety feature that's required if you're going to back free it into your breaker panel from your generator. And the reason it's there is it keeps you from electrocuting any linemen that may be trying to restore the main power from the power company. So that way, when this breaker's on, this has to be this breaker has to be off. The main lug to the power company has to be off for you to be able to slide this plate up and turn this breaker to the on position. Okay, so that's key, guys. That's a safety feature that's required um, whenever you're going to use any kind of system to backfeed into your breaker panel. Um, let me go show you what we've got on the generator inlet side, and uh, we'll show you how it all works. Okay, one other thing too is I've got power monitors on each bus of my breaker box okay um, and it tells me what my current voltage is which should be always be around 120 what my current amperage is on each bus how much how many how much current I'm pulling on each bus and then the total power I'm pulling on each bus in hey watts guys, this is the transfer inlet box that I got off of Amazon um, it's capable of 50 amp service 50 amps at 240 volts and um, this I ran to my breaker box and all you got to do is plug your uh, the wire from your generator and it goes in here now you notice this is a this requires a female connection on this end and that's another safety feature um, you should always use a female connection when you're feeding into an inlet box because if for some reason it falls out there's no male prongs sticking out on the ground that are live coming from the generator I hear a lot of people back feeding into like a stove connection, like for your range in your kitchen, or back feeding through the dryer. That's a no-no. You know why? Because when you're back feeding that way, guys, if the wire falls out of it that you're back feeding with, that's a, those are male connections on there, and they're live. So if they fall out, any, anybody walking by that trips over it, doesn't realize it's live and touches it, they're going to get electrocuted. All right. Now for 50 amp service. Which for 240 volts on a dipole connection, we had to run six gauge wire because six gauge wire, copper stranded, can support 55 amps. So you always want to be just a little bit above your capacity um, so that it can handle the current and um, is properly insulated to handle the heat associated with it at maximum power. Uh, which, of course, we never really run maximum load in our generator, but um, it's just a safety factor that's built into it. Okay?